Welcome to our buyer's guide for nighttime sleep for babies. There are so many products out there that claim to help your baby get the perfect night's sleep. And it can be quite overwhelming to know which one is right for you. So we're here to take you through the basics, introduce you to the different products and help you make your, the right choice. My name's Gemma and I'm Consumer and Reviews Editor for Made for Mums. And I'm Susie, I'm Editorial Director. And at Made for Mums, our main purpose is to help parents make confident choices. And when it comes to sleep and sleeping at night, we know how important it is to get the right product that's going to work for your baby, but also for you. And we do this through having thousands of reviews. We have professionally done reviews and also we get a lot of feedback and reviews from parents themselves who've been testing products over several months or even years. And we know that with sleep, there's really one purchase. We're going to start with the main purchase, which is a cot or a cot bed. At some point, certainly by six months, your baby will need to be in either a cot or a cot bed. Yeah, so what is the difference between a cot and a cot bed? They're really very similar. Um, a cot is is basically going to last you till your baby's around the two, maybe up to two and a half, depending on how keen your baby is to kind of, your toddler by that stage, yeah. is to kind of climb, be able to climb out. Um, but it is a cot, that is what it is there for. A cot bed will enable you around that same time, around the sort of two, two and a half years, to turn it into a toddler bed. And so it has long lasting, it can sometimes be a little bit bigger as well, so it will last your baby or toddler a little bit longer. Sometimes you can even um, buy additional packs which will take it up and turn it into a day bed or will actually turn it in and last until your child is about 10. Okay. It's incredible the choices that yeah. are out there. So this is this new Scott Scandi that we're looking at here, which is a cot bed. That's actually. right. So this is one of those that can be converted in, in multiple ways. But right now, this is in cot mode. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. And, and you know, we talk about, well, what do you need? And the reason we say this is the essential is that you can actually start with a newborn. You can put a newborn in a cot or a cot bed. I know that some parents may feel, whoa, it's a really big space and there's my tiny little newborn, um, but it is safe. It's just that we do know with safe sleeping guidelines that for those first six months, you should have your baby in the same room as you when you're sleeping at night. Absolutely. So that can mean if you live in a, if you happen to live in a, a smaller house or a flat or you've got a small bedroom, you may not actually be able to fit something of this size in your room or even if you can, you might not be able to get round it to go and reach your baby or, or get out of bed yourself. So there are alternatives and we'll talk about those in a little while. But as you say, a cot or a cot bed is really the only thing you need. They can be used from, from newborn even to your newborn that's teeny tiny when you first put them in. Absolutely. And so I think you think about size and space. That's, yeah. that's going to be one of your key considerations. And then there are different base heights, aren't there? And we've got a good example here. Yeah, so this is in newborn mode um, for a very obvious reason, and that is after you've just given birth to a baby, particularly if you've had a C-section, the last thing you're going to want to do is have the baby in your arms and have to kind of manoeuvre them right down to the bottom of the cot. So the newborn give, gives a height. This is purely for the parent. It makes no difference to the sleep for the baby. It just means that for you, you can access them for night feeds to soothe them, to get them in and out when they're sleeping. And some cots and cot beds have a number of different levels. Yeah, Others will have here. will have one or two or and, and yeah, and as someone who had a cesarean again leaning over, that was that was a, a big issue. Um occasionally you get extra features as well. You might have under the cot storage or around the side, and as we said, it can transform into other types of furniture as well later on. But normally you're gonna pay for those extras. Yeah. But I think the, the key thing is safety, isn't it? So how Absolutely. do we know that, that this cot, this is the safe space for my baby to sleep in? So you're looking for a safety standard that exists in the UK. I'm going to say the name. It is on the Made for Mums website if you don't have a pen handy. But there's a, a safety standard. It is EN 716 colon 2008 plus A1 colon 2013. They made that really nice and easy for us to remember, didn't they? <laughs> um, that's what you're looking for. And uh, what that that has um, is based on is, is design elements that make sure the cot is safe, the main one being the gap between the bars here, that needs to be 6.5 centimetres or less. 
so that your baby can't get a limb or worse dangling out the side. Um, so if you look for that and buy from a reputable retailer or from a British brand, then you know that you're going to be getting that safety that you need on the cot. And I think one of the questions that you might come across, particularly if you're doing your research, is around the safety of a drop-sided cot. Mm -hmm. And um, and you may, if you if you do start looking into it, you may see that in the United States, you can no longer it's no longer legal to sell um, cots that have this drop side. Now we've checked, we've we've talked to the Baby Products Association and also the Lullaby Trust. In the UK, we have different regulations and they are more stringent. They've actually been updated twice since uh, the US brought in their ban. So we're talking about different products that are sold in the UK. And it now is very, very, they've been made so that there isn't a danger of them dropping down and they have extra kind of locking systems. And of course you only have them down to put your baby in. It's a, it's, it means that you don't have to have the, the different levels of the base. You can kind of put your baby in and then you would immediately put the top, put the side back up and lock it in. Absolutely, it's not a bedside crib. No, That's something totally. we'll look at separately later. But I think, you know, so so don't get worried about that. It's total personal choice. There are ways you can do it without the drop sided, but it is important to know that in the UK, as long as it's meeting those safety standards, that is safe and legal. Great. So moving on to something else that's very important, and I know Susie, this is one of your favorite things, is the mattress. We spend so long being obsessed with like the design of the cot, how it's gonna look in the nursery or in the bedroom, and forget that the most important thing is the surface that your baby sleeps on. And I know for me, when you when you picture a newborn, you think, oh, they want to be cuddled and cuddled and in something soft and lovely. But actually, in terms of safe sleep, the opposite is the case. Yeah, we, we're talking about a mattress that is probably firmer than, than we would choose as adults. So it's just really important that it's, it's firm enough. And um, we can talk you through in a moment um, at the, the firmness test as well that you can do um, uh, you know when you're testing out but yes don't worry don't worry that it feels feels hard and it's funny because the mattress let's face it, it's not the most sexy product that <laughs> you're going to be choosing but it is key and some cots and cot beds will come with the mattress that will be part of the bundle or part of the product itself others won't which gives you the opportunity to to research and find the mattress that's right for you um, and they do come in, there are, I think you would say, two standard there's, yeah, sizes. Yeah, there's, there's a standard cotton cot bed size. I think it's 160 by, uh, 60 by 120 and uh, 70 by 140. But there are also lots of brands that make cots in slightly different sizes. So you may find yourself in a position, because your mattress needs to fit perfectly in the cot, where if you buy a specific cot, you can only buy the branded mattress that comes with it, and even the branded sheets and um, bedding as well. So do consider that. You might want to go for something that has that standard size instead. Yeah, don't be tempted. You know, if you see a good a, a mattress that's kind of available for a good price, it needs to fit the cot or cot bed that you are buying. And if you are inheriting something or have been given something second hand, a cot or cot bed, that's absolutely fine. But buy a new mattress. We it's really not advised to ever use a second hand mattress. Yeah, baby mattresses are not like adult mattresses that will last ten years. They last one baby yes absolutely even with your second baby you should have a new mattress and that's just then keeping in safe um, safety uh, safe sleep guidelines so when we want to check about the firmness of the mattress it's a very simple thing that you can do you just place your hand in the center of the mattress and also to the side as well and when you push your hand down it shouldn't make um, a big sort of imprint it shouldn't mold to your hand and when you lift it up it actually bounces straight back that's the way you know it's nice and firm okay so we've talked about the importance of choosing uh, the right safe mattress for your baby which leads us really really easily into talking a little bit about safe sleep in general so there are certain guidelines that we all need to know hopefully you've heard these before but we will just reiterate the important ones and I think number one, hopefully everyone knows this, is every time you put your baby down to sleep, you put them down on their backs. 
that's the key one for me. It's so key and incredibly when they brought in the back to sleep campaign in the 70s it actually reduced the incidence of SIDS by 70% so if you're going to remember anything always put your baby on their back when they go to sleep. Now occasionally they you know as they get older they do start to roll don't worry just come back in and put them back Put them back on their sleep on their on their backs to sleep absolutely i mean i have a toddler and he still goes down on his back every night even though he's all around the cot by the end of the night just stick with that one rule and the next one for me would be especially with a big cot like this where to put them yes yeah, so there's this this catchy little slogan which is feet to foot and it helps you remember that actually you might think put your baby you know in the middle of the cot but no you actually put their feet towards the right at the bottom of the foot of the cot and that way they can't move down you know they may be very wiggly at night but they can't move down under the covers because that brings us on to the next thing the covers should never go above their shoulders and there should be nothing covering their face don't worry about a hat just them in their basic sleepwear with a sheet um, and and it must be just underneath their shoulders or just at the level of their shoulders they don't have to sleep with a sheet and blankets no i've got something down here i'm a little bit obsessed with these this is a baby sleeping bag now for me i don't see the point in blankets when these exist they take all the stress out of that wriggly baby problem um, make sure you choose the right size for your baby that's an important one because the neck and armholes are designed to fit you can buy some that have poppers down the side to adjust but just make sure you're fitting them on on the baby correctly just to ensure that they can't do the opposite and wriggle down into the sleeping bag but as you can see that one's got quite a nice tight neck hole that will fit like tightly around your baby um, and what's great is they have different top levels don't they for absolutely different temperatures. For different temperatures which is a really good thing to move on to next now talking of things i get obsessed with baby temperature was another mm. one for me um, you hear a lot about you know the different types of things you should put your baby in for sleep. I think number one is there is a recommended temperature that you should try and keep your room at, and that in the UK is between 16 and 20 degrees Celsius, which is great in winter, maybe in spring and autumn. If you happen to have, have a newborn in summer, it can get quite stressful. I think sometimes if you get a heat wave or if the room goes above that, please don't worry too much. If it's really hot, it's absolutely fine to just put your baby down in a nappy. Do what you need to do to keep them cool. Um, a little, just a little cotton vest, you know, look for breathable fabrics and things. You don't have to have them in one of these, but I know that some of these come in 0.2 tog, which is, you know, the very, um, very, very thin, just something as a cover, almost like putting a sheet over yourself in bed. Absolutely, and you can, you know, it is a good idea if it is very hot and you're a bit worried, then you can just check the temperature of your baby, can't you, while Absolutely, yeah, but don't do the forehead as you would with an adult. The best place to check is behind the neck or on the chest. Um, difficult sometimes to do behind the neck but you can sort of if they're on their back they should be sneak your fingers in behind and just have a feel oh yeah just you know down on the chest there is perfect very good and the last thing is about not having anything loose in the cot or cot bed itself so no toys no sleep aid no um, loose duvets or pillows it's just your baby and whatever the covering is that they if you've got sheets that are tucked in and and that's all they need yeah the only safe comforter for a baby under six months is a dummy if that's something that you've chosen to introduce so just follow those guidelines and you can then hopefully get a reasonable night's sleep <laughs> um, and you know your baby is going to be in the right place sleeping as safely as possible okay so we've looked at the classic cot or cot bed now what we've got here is a bedside crib this is the kiko next to me magic but there are loads of these on the market all, all slightly different but basically they all do the same thing one is they help save you space so if you do happen to have a smaller um room or you know everything's a little bit tight in your bedroom also but maybe you know for the baby they don't look quite so lost in there as they would do in a big cot and the second thing is these have been designed to give a safe way for your baby to sleep as close to you as possible. So they can be used just like this in standalone mode, like a small cot, or you can fasten this to your bed and then there is a drop down side. Ta -da. Very nice. And you can leave this down while your baby is sleeping because they will still be, be safe in their sleep space, but it's the closest you're gonna to get to a co-sleeping in a safe way. 
And I believe there's been a recent safety update or, or guidelines, regulations around what Absolutely. it now needs to comply to. Yeah, so I've got another catchy name for you. This one is BSEN 1130 colon 2019. This is a, a very, very new safety guideline. So you may find that there are still older models of products out there that meet the earlier um, standard of that. Um, and one of the things that really is 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 very different is about how far the drop down side can go because we get questions, don't we, about oh you know can it go can it go right down now? Yeah, you probably noticed this is about two thirds of the way down, and people ask you know or say it would be great if it would drop all the way down. The reason it doesn't is for safety for your baby. So that one of the things that's coming with the new safety standard is that there now must be a gap of at least 120 millimeters or 12 centimeters between the um, the edge of the drop down and that's the bit that will be in line with your bed or with your mattress and the area in which the baby sleeps so they're just recessed down a little bit so and then they can't roll out onto absolutely. your bed they're just in that safe space but it just keeps them safer yeah and and that's obviously when you have the drop down side it must be fastened to the bed and you don't have to have it in drop down do you if you feel yeah. more comfortable but it's it's you know as you were showing it's very easy to kind of do it up and down if that's the way you want to then pick your baby up to 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 maybe get up and feed absolutely and actually you know we're going to show some of the features now and a lot of these features will only work if you've got the side up so for example if i just push down that lock i think that one's already down um this has got a rocking function which is really great if you've got a motion junkie baby who sleeps best in the pram you can kind of give them a little bit of movement to soothe them to sleep in the cot as well um they also, you know, you can adjust the height, obviously, and that's something to bear in mind when you're choosing the right one to fit your bed. Um, some of them also have a tilting function where you can just drop it down just a tiny little bit to an angle. That's really good if your baby's got any digestive issues or something like reflux. But what I would say is speak to your doctor before doing that. It's best to have it flat if you can. My son had quite bad reflux and we never actually had to tilt him. So and the know. tilt, if you do tilt a really very slight angle and make sure your baby is in that feet to foot position because you don't want them at risk of sliding down and sliding under any covers. Absolutely. So you look at those features and obviously the other thing that you do need to bear in mind, I'm just going to lock that one again so it doesn't rock, is do the same, so. when, you, um, when you're choosing your bedside crib, you need to check that it's going to fit next to your bed. There's probably nothing worse than buying one taking it home and finding that it doesn't match. So you might think because it's got a fasten and this one has like clips and hooks that you're going to need a bed with a bed frame. But actually, Susie's got the longest straps in the world. These are ones <laughs> designed to fit onto a divan bed. So they have, all these manufacturers have done all they can to try and ensure that they'll fit as many beds as possible, you know, adjustable heights, um, different kinds of straps and clips and hooks. But do make sure you do a little bit of research, if, especially if you've got a non-standard bed in your room. And also, you want to think about the mattress. I'm going to talk about mattress again. Make sure nice and firm, and um, and you know, again, it's going to meet the safety standards. But just check for that. And again, if you are inheriting anything, you need to always buy a new mattress. Yeah, that includes these, and a lot of these manufacturers will sell the mattresses separately. And all the same rules apply. Nothing else in there except your baby and their what they sleep in. So we've been looking at bedside cribs, which are a great way to have, it's a smaller area for your baby to sleep in next to you or in the same room as you. But you can go even smaller than that with a Moses basket. This is from Little Green Sheep. And Moses baskets are smaller than a bedside crib, but they are totally safe space for your baby to sleep overnight. They are light and portable. Uh, they may be a little bit cheaper than a bedside crib, and they're great also for daytime napping because the safety advice is that you should always have your baby in the same room as you during the day when they are napping or sleeping. So really easy to sort of carry around from room to room, obviously move it and then put your baby in, put the baby on, on their back to sleep. Um, some also come with a stand like this one and or you can buy a stand to go with it and it just means your baby's elevated which is feels quite nice especially at night time where you've got that perhaps that little bit more connection but they do only last a few months yeah if you've got a big baby mine was 10 pounds at birth i think you you run the risk of them maybe not lasting you up until six months 
So yeah, and remember, you know, otherwise you want them in the same room as you. So then once they've outgrown, then you're looking, going into a cot or cot bed. And I think, you know, when in terms of what you're looking for, the key things are, remember that mattress must be nice and firm. And also the sides, you don't want them too heavily padded. It might look like the most gorgeous place for your baby to sleep, but you actually want good airflow around your baby and breathability, breathable sides. So just nicely, lightly padded is great. And then we, when we're talking about, so we've got the, the Moses baskets, which are fantastic for kind of taking away, even to, you know, it's a great, great um, item to take if you're traveling to grandparents, or whatever, but you may want something a bit more substantial. Absolutely, and I'm here with a travel cot. So this is the Bugaboo Stardust. There are lots of different travel cots out there and they do vary quite a lot, um, particularly in, in how they're put up and down or the little functionality they have. But these are yet another safe overnight sleeping space for your baby. And I know a lot of people will also choose to have one of these maybe down in their living room to use for occasional naps and things like that. Some of them even um, work as a playpen or just a safe place to put your baby while you nip to the loo or make a cup of tea. Um, so they're very useful, but travel is the main reason for one of these. Um, and the, the key thing about a travel cot is that it's gonna fold up. This one folds up this way, so it will be a flat um, product once it's folded up, the mattress folds up within it. There are, so that's a flat one that would be great for putting in the boot of a car, sliding underneath a bed for storage. But there are other ones that fold more into a golf bag kind of shape, tall and fat. Um, and those are really good uh, if you need to take it on a plane or um, you, know, you're, you want to store it somewhere upright. Um, so do take a look at that. That's probably a key when choosing a travel cot. And I remember actually because we had one sort of uh, the golf bag type design and actually you can sort of sling it over your shoulder. Absolutely, and they all, you know, as, as a travel product, they, they will usually come in a bag with straps so that you can carry and, it. And we know how much stuff we take when you have a baby and you're going even Absolutely. just to see grandparents for, a, for an overnight stay. Yeah, so the good thing about these is they will usually fold either with the mattress in, this one folds, the mattress is down there. It's the same as with, with any, we talk about mattresses a lot. Um, do that same firmness test but they do tend to be firmer with a travel cot because it needs to be something that folds so they'll either fold in half onto a flat one or some of them concertina um, and, and yeah I remember looking at the first travel cot I saw and thinking that mattress is really hard but as we've said mm. over and over again in this mm -hmm. firm mattress is good and just because yep. you find it weird doesn't mean that your baby will struggle with yeah, it just don't worry about it and I guess with the with the portability weight wise they can really vary they can't really they? can and especially because because they will often come with little added accessories it does all add to the weight of them so do check what the weight is this one's super light i can pick it up like that mm. um others may have more metal in them or more added extras that will add to the weight so consider how much you're actually going to want to carry it though or whether it's that you want something that folds up small because it, you know if you want something that folds up a lot it's probably going to have more little parts and they all add up and and some can be used um, with a bassinet, they come with a bassinet. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So, so that makes them more suitable for newborn, as we've said many times. Most cots do check the manufacturer's instructions on travel cots in particular, but most you can put a baby straight down onto the lower. But a lot will come with a little added bassinet, which you just fasten onto the side and it just drops down and gives you that easy access when they're small. But as long as it's suitable from birth, you don't have to have that. And you can just put your baby and straight down. And it's an down. extra thing to carry if you're travelling. Yeah, indeed. And and you can um, and you just need to remember that feet to foot, so that your baby is down one side. Because again, they are they can be quite they can be quite big. Absolutely, some of them are standard cot size, mm. um, and just have very clever mechanisms to fold them up. So yeah, follow you know with the Moses basket with a with a travel cot, whatever you're using, same safe sleep rules apply. I will say one thing though, from a, from a personal perspective. Travel cots are really good if you've got a baby who uses a dummy because with these little mesh sides rather than the bars of a cot, they can't lose their dummy. That's a little <laughs> tip from me. If you've got a dummy baby, you're going to love your travel cot. <laughs> and I'd say the, the, the mesh sides as well, as well as that great breathability, also means you get a really good view of your baby. Yeah. So um, they're, they're a really nice product. You don't have to have one, 
Um, but they are, you know, and it's interesting how many now have different functionalities and extra, you know, Absolutely, like, the, like the things that make them buzz and rock and things that you can add on to play music and mobiles and all that kind of thing. And they vary wildly in price as well. So there's, there's one to suit every budget, really. And the, you can even get travel bedside fits as well. So I think, I think really the, the key is that there are a huge number of products out there. Um, check that they're safe, but when they are safe, what you really want to be thinking about is how are you going to use them? What do you really need? Think about the size of your room that you're sleeping in and your baby's going to join you in there for the first six months. Think about, do you want a cot or a cot bed? What are your needs? What's your preference on that? If you want a bedside crib, check that it does fit with your style of bed and always, always follow those safe sleep guidelines. Absolutely. And for me, I think one thing to say as well is if you've seen all these things and you think you might need one or two of them, then, you know, buy everything that you need if, if you have the ability to do that, because it's always worth investing in safely. Indeed. And you can find our reviews on Made for Mums. We've reviewed so many of these products and you know, hopefully that's given you a really good guide to choosing the right sleep products for you and your baby. And here's to a good night's sleep.